there was once a young fellow who had learned a trade of locksmith and told his father he would now go out into the world and seek his fortune. Very well, said the father. I am quite content with that, and gave him some money for his journey. So he travelled about and looked for work. After a time, he resolved not to follow the trade of locksmith any more, for he no longer liked it. But he took a fancy for hunting, and there met him in his rambles a huntsman, dressed in green, who asked whence he came, and whither he was going. The youth said he was a locksmith's apprentice, but that he, but that the trade no longer pleased him, and he had a liking for huntsmanship. Would he teach it to him? Oh yes, said the huntsman, if thou wilt go with me. Then the young fellow went with him, bound himself to him for some years, and learned the art of hunting. After this he wished to try his luck elsewhere, and the huntsman gave him nothing in the way of payment, but an air gun, which had, however, his property, that it hit his mark without fail whenever he shot with it. Then he set out and found himself in a very large forest where he would not get to the end of it in one day. When evening came he seated himself in a high tree in order to escape from the wild beasts. Towards night it seemed to him as if a tiny little light glimmered in the distance. Then he looked down through the branches towards it and kept well in his mind where it was. But in the first place, he took off his hat and threw it down in the direction of the light, so that he might go to the hat as a mark when he had descended. Then he got down and went to his hat, put it on again, and went straight forwards. The farther he went, the larger the light grew, and when he got close to it, he saw what he saw that it was an enormous fire, and that three giants were sitting by it, who had an ox. Father, I know not I have been asleep, but when she arose, and would have put on her slippers, <coughs> the right one was gone. And when she looked at her neck, her neckerchief, it was cut, and the right corner was missing, and when she looked at her nightdress, a piece was cut off it, uh, cut out of it. <coughs> The king summoned his whole court together, soldiers and everyone else who was there, and asked who had set his daughter at liberty and killed the giants. Now it, now it happened that he had a captain who was one-eyed and hideous, who was one-eyed and a hideous man and he said that he had done it. Then the old king said that he, had, that he had accomplished this. As he had accomplished this, he should marry his daughter. But the maiden said, rather than, marry <coughs> rather than marry him, dear father, I will go away into the world as far as my legs can carry me. But the king said that if she would not marry him, she would take off her royal garments and wear peasant's clothing and go forth, and that she should go to a potter and begin a trade of earthen vessels. 
So she put off her royal apparel and went to a potter and borrowed crockery enough for a stall. And she promised him also that if she had sold it by the evening, she would pay for it. Then the king said she was to seat herself in a corner with it and sell it, and he arranged with some peasants to drive over it with their carts, so that everything should be broken into a thousand pieces. When therefore the king's daughter had placed her stall in the street, by came the carts and broke all she had into tiny fragments. She began to weep and said, Alas, how I shall ev- how shall I ever pay for the p- for the pots now? The king had, however, wished by this to force her to marry the captain, but instead of that, she again went to the potter and asked him if he would lend her once more. Lend to her once more. He said, No, she must first pay for the thing she had already had. Then she went to her father and cried and lamented, and said she would go forth into the world. Then said he, I will have a little hut built for thee in the forest outside, and in it thou shalt stay all thy life long, and cook for everyone. But thou shalt take no money for it. When the hut was ready, a sign was hung on the door whereon was written, Today given tomorrow sold. There she remained a long time, and it was rumoured about the world that a maiden was there who cooked without asking for pay, uh, for payment, and that this was set forth on a sign outside her door. The huntsman heard it likewise, and thought to himself, this would suit thee, thou art poor and hast no and hast no money. So he took his air gun and his knapsack, wherein all things which he had formerly carried away with him from the castle as tokens of his truthfulness, were still lying and when that were still lying and went into the forest and found the hut with the sign today given, tomorrow sold. He had put on the sword with which he had cut off the heads of the three giants, and thus entered the hut and ordered something to eat, to be given to him. He was charmed with the beautiful maiden, who was indeed as lovely as any picture. She asked him whence he came and whither he was going, and he said, I am roaming about the world. Then she asked him where he had got the sword, for that truly her father's name was on it. He asked her if she were the king's daughter. Yes, answered she. With this sword, said he, did I cut off the heads of three giants. And he took the tongues out of his knapsack in proof. Then he also showed her the slipper in the corner of the neckerchief and the bit of the nightdress. Hereupon she was overjoyed and said that he was the one who had delivered her. On on this they went together to the old king who fetched him the heart, who fetched him to the heart. And she led him into her room and told him that the huntsman was the man who had really set her free from the giants. And when the aged king saw all the proofs of this, he could no longer doubt and said that he was very glad he knew how everything had happened and that the huntsman should have her to wife, on which the maiden was glad at heart. Then she dressed the huntsman as if he were a foreign lord, and the king ordered a feast to be prepared. When they went to the when they went to table, 
The captain sat on the left side of the king's daughter, but the huntsman was on the right. And the captain thought he was a foreign lord who had come on a visit. When they had eaten and drunk, the old king said to the captain that he would set before him something which he must guess. Supposing anyone said that he had killed the three giants, and he were asked where the giant's tongues were, and he were forced to go and look, and there were none in their heads. How could that happen? The captain said. Then they cannot have had any. Not so, said the king. Every animal has a tongue. And then he likewise asked that anyone would deserve, or what anyone would deserve, who made such an answer. The captain replied, he ought to, be torn, to, torn in pieces. Then the king said he had pronounced his own sentence and the captain was put in prison and then torn in four pieces. But the king's daughter was married to the huntsman. After this, he brought his father and mother and they lived with their son in happiness. And after the death of the old king, he received the kingdom. And that was the skillful huntsman. Join me next time as I read The Flail from Heaven. Until then. Bye.